This is getting even more interesting now, actually. This is not what I would expect at all. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're gonna to have a look at these three types of medieval crossbow bolt. And we are gonna shoot them at these three types of medieval armor from the year uh, 1250, thereabouts. So before the advent of plate armor. This is not an exhaustive test. It is not going to give us all the answers we need about any of this. But it's just gonna give us an indication and it's something that I'm interested in. I want to know how these bolts fare against this kind of armor. The bow I've chosen here is a, a faux composite. So this is actually steel clad with wood. It is not a real composite bow. But the reason I've chosen this look for it is it's based on an image from the Siege of Lincoln Fair in 1217. The bow to me looks like a composite. It was probably spanned with a spanning belt by a professional crossbowman. That is not me. So I've made the assumption he can draw a lot more than I can. So I'm cheating. This is a 350 pound draw weight bow. I am spanning it with a goat's foot lever. He probably would have used a belt. Then we have the male and the jack. Well, the male is a riveted link male, around about 10 mil, 3 eighths of an inch links. Maybe as good as some medieval male, maybe worse. Don't really know. It'll be better than some, worse than others. It's the male that I've got. That would be worn over a garment, because otherwise it's hellishly uncomfortable. But the garment itself is not armor. Uh, not in its own right. So that's just a five layer wool and, and canvas jack. And then we look at the gambeson here. We have late 15th century um, ordnance that specifies how it's made. Doe skin over the top, 30 odd layers of a soft washed linen. That is a 15th century source, 250 years out of date. But presumably they did something similar. It's the closest we've got. This is made of cotton wadding, loose cotton wadding, raw cotton and then a sheet of fabric top and bottom and the whole lot sewn together with, with a linen thread. Now, I might be butchering this completely, but I believe that Arabic for cotton is al -Katan, and this is called an Akatan, and there is an assumption, I think it's a general assumption, that the two words are related and that these were stuffed with raw cotton. Raw cotton is this stuff here, uh, so it's just uh, the cotton fibres. That's just built up and then just sewn down in channels. And what you end up with is you know, a reasonably supple, um, definitely sword proof in terms of cutting, stabbing, not so sure. Uh, and again, is it puncture proof from a bolt? Don't know, let's find out. Talking through the bolts, we have got on your right hand side, a short bodkin. In the middle, we've got a barbed flesh cutting uh, head. And on the left hand side, we have got a needle bodkin. My understanding of the needle bodkin is that it is effective against male and it is effective against fabric. That's really what I want to find out today. Then we have the barbed head. This is a hunting head, but it's also a head for war. So it's very effective against flesh. Obviously you, you can't pull it out so easily, but also it should be able to go through fabric relatively well. Now the last one that we're gonna be looking at is the short bodkin. Now I've picked a, uh, the year of 1250. The reason for that is that plate armor starts to come in after that and things change again. But the thing is, in let's say we pick the year 1400, people will still be wearing simple mail and, and padded garments. So they will be facing bolts like this with these garments. So it's just to see how this would fare in that situation. My experiment today is not gonna be exhaustive. It, it can't be, there's so much we don't know. I've had to make so many assumptions. So the armor we don't really know about. We don't know quite how the, the acaton was constructed. We don't know quite how the gambeson or the mail and its undergarment was constructed. We don't know the power of the bow. We do pretty much know the shape of the heads, uh, and that really is about it. But what this will do, will give us a comparator of one bolt head type to another bolt head type, and what they do. Whether this is exactly how they would have performed 700, 800 years ago, well, we simply don't know. Um, does it give us an indicator of what's going on? Well, hopefully, yes, it will. So we're gonna go and shoot this stuff now. And if you're interested in any of this, this is available on my website. Let's go. First up, we'll shoot the armor piercing head. So just loading up with my goat's foot. Straight off. Next up, the flesh cutter, I think.
Well, that was straight in. I guess the arm piercer, uh, the plate cutter, would still give you some broken ribs or something though. Now for the needle bodkin. So this is the one specifically designed against this armour. And again, straight in. So let's go and have a look at those. This is interesting and not exactly what I would expect. So this was the Akaton sample. Now this is the needle bodkin here, which has penetrated around about uh, three inches, 75 millimetres, something like that, maybe a little bit more. That is going to be into a torso, probably a fatal wound ultimately. Maybe not then, but in the next day, two days. But the flesh cutter here, let's have a look how deep that is, because that has gone in significantly deeper than, oh, significantly deeper. Yeah, okay. So that went all the way through the back. That went in around about mm, that deep. So about four inches, something like that, 100 mil. So 100 mil into your torso, not this is ballistic gel, but 100 mil into your torso is definitely going to be nasty. But against the Akaton, the flesh cutter was a better performer than the needle bodkin. The short bodkin, the plate cutter, just bounced straight off. Next up, we're going to shoot the Gamberson, see how it fares with these three bolts again. So let's go for it. Same bow, same bolts, different armour. So this time it's the Gamberson. Plate cutter first again. Again it bounced straight off. Broken ribs I would think. So flesh arrow again. Straight in. I was hoping it would be uh, defeated by that. And then the last is the needle bodkin. And again, that was in. This is getting even more interesting now, actually. This is not what I would expect at all. So here is where the plate cutter hit. It hasn't even broken the outside of the surface. So this is without a doubt proof against bolt cutting heads, uh, plate cutting heads. But here is the needle bodkin, which I thought was supposed to be very good against fabric armor. But look at it. So if I just pull that, oh, it is tough. Blimey, this is tough. There we go. So what you've got there is 30 mil uh, inch and a quarter. That's the penetration. So actually through the other side of that, was probably only about here, maybe an inch. So this would be a survivable wound with that. But then let's come down and have a look at this. This is the flesh arrow again, the flesh bolt. I was not expecting it to fare so well. So if we have a look at this now, this is uh, 40, 45 millimeters, um, inch and a half in, and the barbs are now inside your body as well. So this is really gonna mess your day up. But what's interesting, is I thought that needle bodkins were against fabric armor, but the flesh cutter is working much better than the needle bodkins. And just so you know, this flesh cutter here, if we have a look, I've not sharpened it like a razor. It's relatively sharp, but my feeling is that munition type weapons are never gonna be treated like an individual's personal, amazingly kept kit. So I haven't sharpened this like a razor blade and it's still going clean through. Here we go for the last of our armour samples. So we've got mail, riveted mail, over uh, a jack, which is five layers of wool and linen, then onto our foam and the target beyond. So, starting with our plate cutter again, let's see how this does. Well, Bounced off, not a good day for the plate cutter. We're gonna go for the flesh arrow. Also bounced off. 
which I think I kind of expected. So what is the needle bogging going to do? Now I thought that it was good against fabric armour. I don't think it is. Well, in fact, we've shown it isn't. Is it good against mail? Yes, it is. Let's go and have a look at that. Well, we have some answers. So the plate cutter was shot first again. As you saw, bounced straight off. Next up was the flesh bolt. Again, bounced straight off. Didn't even think about penetrating. A Little bit mullered on the end here on the edges. And the third one that went through, not so great against fabric armor, either the Akaton or the Gamberson, but against the male, it was, oh, actually, it is jammed in there. There we are. So that is how deep it went into the mail and through the jack. The others were defeated completely by this armour. The needle bodkin straight on in there. I found the results of this really interesting. It's not at all what I was expecting. And it's not a scientific experiment. That's what I'll say again. We don't have the information to accurately make the armour because there is no information. But this compares what I've done. I've told you what I've done and we've compared it and this is what we've got. So, the bolt cutter performed absolute rubbish, bounced off everything. The flesh cutter did far better than I was expecting actually. So it penetrated the Akaton, uh, deeper than the needle bodkin, definitely to a killing depth. Gamberson, to a killing depth, more than the needle bodkin, bounced straight off the male in the jack. Needle bodkin penetrated both the Akaton and the Gamberson. The Gamberson though, it only penetrated around about inch and a quarter, 30 mil probably not a killing depth. So that was interesting because I thought that the needle bodkins were against fabric armour. But against the male, everything else bounced off, that went through and it went through to, to a killing depth. So I can conclude from this, in my experiments here today, needle bodkin great against male, flesh uh, head against fabric armour and against bare flesh, and the uh, plate cutter bare flesh obviously but against plate armor but we still don't know the whole story of that because if you look at my arrows versus armor video you'll see that we haven't yet learned everything there is to know about these things we'll be visiting that again so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it it's been really interesting for me and if you're interested in medieval weapons go check my websites out it's worth it thank you